Hello, so I've got a new miter saw that's been sent to me by Bosch. It is a GCM 18 volt 254D Professional. Now, I do already have a Bosch miter saw. I've got the one with the 216 mil blade. So this is the 254, I keep having to read back to the thing. So it's bigger capacity. And that's really the first thing to tell you about it. So I'm not gonna go through the specs, but with a larger blade, obviously you can cut thicker wood and much wider pieces. I will put a link down below to the saw so you can read the full specs. Bosch sent me the 216 mil saw a year ago and I've used it loads. I built this workshop with it, a garden room for my mum, lots of other projects. But when they offered me this, I thought ah, an upgrading capacity would be nice. So I went for it, but also, it seems to have a lot of other features as well. So it's an upgrade in many different ways. The first big change on this saw over the smaller one is it's a double bevel saw. So you've got this wheel at the back and a tab. You loosen that off and pull that out and then you can bevel it either way to a maximum of 47 degrees, but there's positive stops at obviously zero or 90, 22.5 and 45 in both directions. To change the angle of the cut, you loosen this knob at the front, then you pull the lever and you've got positive stops at all the usual places and you can go to a maximum of 48 degrees either way. One of my favourite features of this saw is how many support options there are to keep the saw level or to keep your workpiece level. So I'll go through a few of them. The first thing to keep the saw level, there's a little Bit of metal out the back that just stops it tipping backwards then at the front there's a little foot that can wind in and out to level it on whatever surface you have it on there's four feet with holes in so you can attach it to a mitre saw stand or bolt it to a bench but also they're nice and flat if you just want to clamp it to a surface So with the saw nice and secure, let's look at workpiece support. So you have wings on here, little red knobs, loosen those off, and then these pull out on both sides. Both of these wings have little metal flag stops that pop up. Then you can move the wing in and out so you can set up stops for repeatable cuts. Now, if you have really long pieces, you need extra support. The saw comes with a couple of these blocks. Now. These can just clip onto the end of the wings and they can be extended with them on for a little bit of extra support. But as they're the same height, they can just float freely and be put on the bench further down to stop a piece of work tipping over. These blocks can also lock onto each other. So if I don't need one on either end, I can grab it off that end and then it can lock on to itself on this end. There's loads of possibilities and configurations and I probably haven't thought of them all. But the other thing it can do is lock onto the front bit on both sides. This gives you extra support if you had a wide piece of wood you was cutting, but it also, for transport and storage, is the neatest kind of form factor. Whilst I have it folded down in its smallest form factor, I'll show you about carrying it. So it has a nice big fold down top handle that you could lift it up with. And also these side wings double up as handles. So there's plenty of carrying options on it. Now to lock it in this position, there's two things you can do. You can lock the head down with this pin and then you can lock the slide with this little screw. So then unlock these two bits when you've got it in position and we got on to activating the saw. So once you have a battery in, I won't put one in for the demonstration, you've got the drop mechanism and you've got the trigger. So you can't pull the trigger until you push in one of these buttons. You can push it in from either side so it's easy to use with either hand. The battery just slots in the back of the motor there, and it will work on any battery from the small two amp hour one, but I use the Procore 
amp share ones and this is an eight amp hour one and I find best results with these. But at a push, you can use the smaller ones. So with the battery in, we better talk about the power of this machine. It's a brushless motor, so it is a bit quieter than a normal mains powered one, but it is just as powerful. I was really impressed with the smaller saw and this doesn't disappoint either. Last week I was making the lamp of oak and cutting through some thick bits of oak, which is pretty hard and it does it no problem whatsoever. I've also been uh, cutting some construction material, no problem. And my next project is to build a shed. So this will be my main saw for doing that. So you'll see me cutting through a lot of uh, bits of treated wood and uh, uh, three by twos and things like that. So power wise, it's, it's fantastic. You don't get as much power if you use tiny batteries in it, but if you're, you, all your other big batteries die and all you've got left is this, it will just get you through until the other ones charge. The motor on this is not just directly into the blade, it's at an angle, which means when you're cutting down into this big bit of wood, you don't knock the motor. So that increases the capacity a bit, I think. When you half press the trigger before it engages the motor, it turns on two things, well I suppose three really. It turns on the LED light so you can illuminate your workpiece if you're working somewhere a bit dark. And it's got two laser lines so you can see exactly where the blade's gonna go. That's not a feature I've had before and it's really nice. For dust collection, it's got a really nice hood on the back of the blade. And that goes up to a port at the back and it comes with a nice dust bag that clips in and that has a zip on the bottom for emptying. But I don't tend to use a bag, I tend to use the rack, which has the same click-in system, which I think is great. Because when you're sliding a saw in and out, if you just have a hose that pushes in, it always pops out. So having it secured in there is great. Other accessories that come with it are this work holding clamp. It can go in two places, it's got a hole either side. It's got some knurling on it, so it holds in there well, and is easy to screw down to clamp something down. An accessory that stores on the tool is this Allen key. That just pulls out for blade changing, and around the side is a little button that's the spindle lock, so with one hand you can lock the blade in place and undo it for easy blade changes with all the tools on the machine. The saw does have the ability to do trenching cuts, not that I've tried it yet. So you've got a little um, stop that folds down and then you can screw down with a locking nut. All looks nice and secure and I'm sure that's something I will use at one point, but it's not a feature I kind of use often, but it's definitely nice to have. Another feature I need to point out, maybe more for myself than anyone else, is at the back you've got a little thumb screw on the back of each fence. So you can slide them out the way when you're doing beveled cuts. Now, I might have forgot to do this once on my previous saw. But I think after you've done it once, you remember after that, or hopefully. All right, I think I've shown you around all the features of this now. As I say, I used it last week to make the lamp. So if you want to see it in operation, you can watch that. And I've been using it to make other things, but the videos aren't out yet. And there will be a whole video series coming up about me building my shed. And this will probably be the main tool I use to do that. So I'm really pleased with it. It's, I, well, I really liked the smaller 216 one. This, I just thought would be a bigger version of that. But, it's got some extra features as well, and I just think it's yeah a nicer all-round saw. So if you've got the space, it's slightly bigger. Obviously, it's going to be slightly more expensive, but I think a good rule of thumb is always buy something bigger with more capacity than you need because you can almost cut small things with this, but you can't cut larger things with the smaller one. Did that make any sense? Sounds like I'm waffling now. Anyway, I like the saw and you're gonna see lots more about it. So thank you to Bosch for sending it to me. There'll be a link down below to it if you wanna check it out. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos. Mm -hmm.